My name is Jordan and I am a therapeutic recreation specialist that has been working for the Sheltering Arms Company for approximately five years now. And my name is Celeste Bowers and I have been a recreational therapist for over three decades. All right, so before we get started, I'm just gonna share my screen with our PowerPoint that we have for today. Um, but like Allison said, we're gonna be talking about some tips and tricks to staying engaged in life. So throughout this PowerPoint, it is our hope that you will learn why leisure is important. You will learn some strategies for staying engaged in leisure. We'll talk a little bit about adaptive recreation equipment options. And then we'll also talk about some leisure resources in your community that you can take advantage of. We're gonna talk about the importance of leisure and why leisure is important to you once you leave um, SAI or any other um, facility. Leisure gives you a sense of purpose. Sometimes what you do for your leisure pursuit is your identity. It's a path that helps you discover your identity. Like you might be a wonderful golfer, but you work in a coal mine. But when you're outside of the coal mine, golf is, you're really good at golf. And that is your, that is who you are. It's your passion. And when you have a passion, obviously, you want to get out there and 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 still stay engaged in that passion because it helps improve your overall quality of life. So next we'll talk about some strategies to stay engaged in these passion and leisure activities. So our first one is to create a leisure time clock. So if you picture a clock face right now, you have all the different hours where you can create slivers of the pie. And so while work is important, you do have obligations throughout the day. It's also important to make sure you are putting in time for your leisure and relaxation. So if you imagine a clock face, you can clock out two hours for a doctor's appointment or getting a task done around the house, whether it's cleaning the bathroom or cleaning the kitchen. But you also want to make sure that you are putting a sliver of time in for golf, reading, or something that you enjoy doing. So that way you are having that equal work and play pleasure time. So something to keep important and in mind throughout the process. You also could include your exercise in that too, making sure that you get it done. You know, if you try to get it scheduled every day, maybe in the earlier part of the day, because as the longer the day goes on, sometimes it's harder to get back to that, which might be important. Yeah. And so then another great way to stay engaged in your leisure activities is to do these activities with your friends. You are more inclined to participate in activities if you have somebody there to hold you accountable or to just simply do the activities with because you know that if one day you always go to the park with Susie to walk around the pond and one day you're just not feeling up for it, you know that Susie's gonna hold you accountable in order to go do this activity. You don't want to let Susie down, so you'll get dressed and go whether you feel like it or not. Mm -hmm. And then another great strategy is if you are paying for an activity such as a gym membership or if you are paying to participate in a social group, you're more inclined to go because you don't want to waste that money that you are spending on these activities. And then exploring new activities is also a great option. Um, like Celeste said, it can help you discover a new passion of yours, help you identify yourself and the things that you enjoy. So getting out there, trying new activities in your community is a great way to stay engaged and getting connected to your community resources. So community resources in your area can include simply going to the Y to work out, doing some group exercise programs, or getting connected to great resources such as Sportable, in the Richmond area. And a, a lot of times parks and recreations have a lot of different programs where you can learn new things and things that you might have always wanted to try like sign language or a different cooking skill. I mean and sometimes as you age you know you might have always been into a lot of active things and you tell yourself oh when I get older I'm going to learn to such and such and you know like I've always wanted to take lessons to learn to play the fiddle 
But I figure one day when I slow down enough, I'll be able to take those lessons to learn to play the fiddle. But, you know, try to think of things that you haven't done. And maybe you're not able to physically do some of the things that you did before. So you just kind of have to alter your, your, your plans for your leisure. But as long as you stay busy and engaged, it helps a lot with your mood and your, you know, your outlook. Yes, and if you're not sure how to get connected to community resources in your area, you could simply do a Google search where you type in your interests, such as Needlepoint in the Richmond area, and new classes might pop up, or even groups that get together to do Needlepoint um, might show up as well, so you can get connected to those. And then another reason, when you go to these new groups with like-minded people, you, you've got a whole new set of friends you know, where you, you've opened up your friend um, list, even a, a larger scope, you know, and you're, you'll make new, uh, you know, friendships, you'll, you'll, you know, you might end up going out to eat or, you know, expanding it even further. So, you, you know, that's something to look forward to. And you always go, you know, if you go to do what you enjoy, others there and most of the time enjoy the same thing or they wouldn't have signed up for it. So you're around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And then our last strategy to help stay engaged in leisure is making modifications. So if you have had an acquired injury, um, life is going to look a little bit different now. So it's okay to make modifications to make leisure interests that you did previous a little bit easier to do. Um, so whether that's golfing um, and using a modified golf club or even simply participating in adapted sports um, there are groups that can help you get connected to modifications and kind of explore modifications you can make to your leisure interests. My, my philosophy and a lot of times what I tell my patients is it's easier to be born with a disability and, and be able to do something that you want to do because if you want to really do it, you have to figure out how to do it. And it is to have an acquired disability, you know, because then you're left with you did it one way but now you've got to change the way you do it. But if you're born with a disability and you want to do it, like you've seen these individuals who play, you know, baseball, they have one arm and they're able to catch the ball, put the glove, you know, under their arm and throw the ball. They figure out how to do it one handed because they want to participate like everybody else. <clears throat> I'm now going to talk to you about um, assistive devices that you might need to pursue various different interests that might help you with any difficulties that you might be encountering. A lot of these items can be found on Amazon or on the Access to Recreation site. Um, they are adaptive devices and like I said there are many different ones out there um, and some of them are you know pretty cost effective which is good. Um, go ahead. What you see right here in this picture is um, some adaptive fishing equipment. On the left, this is a rod holder that can be attached to your wheelchair or to a lawn chair or wherever you might be sitting if it has a round um, post to it. And that allows it to hold the fishing rod so that you can, if you only have use of maybe one hand or limited use of both hands, it can hold the rod so that you're able to work on something else such as putting on a, a lure, putting on a worm, taking off a fish. Um, a little hint for both of these devices is that you would probably need a cylindrical fishing um, rod because a trigger pull, a trigger uh, rod, when it looks like a trigger grip uh, on a gun will not fit down into these devices. And you also want to make sure that the um, rod has a little trigger on it so so when it goes down there it slides in that slot because that way it won't spin on you when you when you're fishing the uh, device on the right is used to go around your waist so that if you're able to walk you can walk all around the pond or the boat or wherever you are it much it, it's it's very similar to deep sea fishing um belts that you lock your rod into when you're fighting fish um, it just allows you to go around your waist either when you're seated or if you're walking around and it holds a rod and kind of acts as the same, um, same thing. And you also might want to use a closed face reel because bait casters and open face reels are somewhat difficult to use sometimes if you have a limited um, upper extremity use. 
This is some of the go adaptive golf equipment that we have here at SAI. What you see is what we call the paragolfer. That is that little machine that looks like a little golf cart. And it's put on by stand up and play. And the great thing about this is we have it here at SAI and at a, it is at a couple golf courses here in the Richmond area. And it allows you to um, transfer out of your wheelchair or if you're not able to stand up for long periods of time to stand up and actually drive, putt or chip the golf ball. Um, and it goes all over, it's allowed all over the golf course, um, even up on the greens. And it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful device. We do have golf clinics at times where we can let you trial this out if you're interested. You also see some clubs there. There are short clubs that have been sawed off. So if you are seated in a wheelchair, you don't have that long extension um, sticking up. Then there's a, a clubs that have flexible shafts on those. And what they do is they give you a little bit of extra oomph that you might uh, need if you have a little bit less strength than you had before. There are devices that help you tee, you can, in a standing position, you can tee up a golf ball and you can also pick up a golf ball. The, this is some adaptive hunting equipment that we have available and that you can um, purchase out in the community. On the left is a camera tripod and this is a wonderful thing for using for the barrel of a gun, either seated or in standing. If you only maybe have the use of one hand and you maybe are weak on the, um, on the opposite side, this can be used to stabilize your gun, um, either seated or in standing. And on the right hand side, if you have limited um, you know, finger dexterity, these are trigger pulls and they can be put on your right or your left hand to where you only have to make a movement like a, a left to right to pull the trigger, whereas you don't have to, if you don't have the grip to be able to pull. Um, there are also groups out there in the community that put called Wheel and Sportsman. They put on disabled hunt, hunting um, opportunities as well as fishing opportunities. These are, um, they're very uh, great hunts. They usually feed you breakfast, they feed you lunch, they cater to you most all the day. You're allowed to bring a family member or a friend with you and they are also allowed to hunt. They do manned and dogged um, drives and they try to put you on a stand and they try to push the, uh, the deer or whatever you're hunting at the time past you so that you can have a successful hunt. They usually go in and fetch it when, if you've killed it, they bring it back, help you clean it. It's just a very um, wonderful day. We also do have, we also have adaptive bowling equipment. Oftentimes the You'll see that uh, ramp on the right-hand side. Most bowling alleys have this ramp um, on the premise, and they also have um, gutter gutter guards, which can, they can be raised up from the gutter so that if you don't want to throw your ball into the gutter. There are also adaptive um, sticks that can push a bowling ball. There's rings that you can attach to your chair to hold your bowling ball. And the picture that you see on the left is a hinge bowling ball so that once you throw it, the hinge goes back into the ball and it rolls down the lane. What we have found is very useful is to take a lighter ball, which usually have smaller holes in them and make it larger, make the holes larger so that you don't have to lift such a heavy, um, heavy bowling ball, which sometimes can be harder if, you're, if you become a little weak. What you see here are some adaptive card holders and various different um, made out of wood. The cylindrical card holder on the left can be used if you have, like maybe you have a spinal cord injury and you use a mouth stick, you can use it with a uh, rubber tip to point to your cards or move your cards. The uh, card holders on the bottom right, you can find those at Walmart or Amazon. They're plastic, they hold the cards. Um, we've used We've had Boy Scouts who used just simple flat pieces of wood and run um, slits through them and put little hooks on the back to prop them up. And what this is great for is if you have a limited use of one hand, instead of having to pick your cards up and down off the table, you can place them in the card holder so that you can see them and then you use your, your functional hand to play the game. So it's really great, especially if you have a large number of cards, it's kind of hard to hold them in your hand and look at them all at the same time. It, there's also card shufflers. 
out there. So if you have difficulty shuffling, they, you can just put them in and touch a button and they shuffle and pull them right out. This is some adaptive billiards equipment. As you can see, or, or when you play um, pool, what I have found over the years as I've taken patients out, it is much easier to manipulate around a smaller table than a 10 foot table. You can use a, the bridge that's at most um, pool halls and then um, the little device you see at the top is a, just a small circular um, device with wheels on the bottom and you slide the pool stick through it and, it and it actually holds it up for you much the same as your, say your right handed, your left hand would bridge the pool stick so that what that does is if you do not have the use of your left hand, it will hold the pool stick for you. The cuff on the bottom right is actually goes all around your hand if you have limited um, hand function and the you can attach the um, pool stick in the bottom of it and then you're just making a forward backward motion um, and it kind of helps you grip the pool stick. And there are, like I said, the bridges are already there. Oftentimes you can use those and I would suggest starting off at a smaller table, not a 10 foot table. It's very difficult to get around and to reach. There's also, for more sedentary activities, here's some adaptive sewing and crocheting equipment. Um, there's a crocheting device on the left-hand side, which you attach to your hand, and it allows you to be able to crochet if you have limited use of both upper extremities, or at least one upper extremity hand. And the device on the right-hand side is a clamp for a, if you're doing embroidery and you have a hoop, you can attach this to the table, put the hoop in it, and then use your non-affected hand to uh, be able to um, sew one-handed. And it can hold many different things. It can hold, uh, I mean, it can hold embroidery, cross stitch, you know, you just attach it to the table. And they're also, in the past, they've uh, been devices such as this that actually you sit on top of them and it comes right across your lap so that it's right in front of you and it holds it for you where you don't have to attach it to the table. You could be sitting in your chair watching television. There are also um, universal cuffs out there. The universal cuffs are used to hold many things. They can help you hold tools. If you have limited hand um, function, they can help you hold rackets. That could be pickleball rackets, tennis rackets, um, golf clubs, uh, fishing rods, pool sticks, uh, many as various things. You can also use gardening gloves and golf gloves and use some Velcro. You can put Velcro around whatever device you're using and Velcro on your gloves and that'll help you grip objects better if you're having a hard time holding on to those. All right, so next we're gonna talk about some ways to stay engaged at home. And so I know with COVID right now, a lot of people have been staying home. And so one of the best things we can do right now is talk with other people. So that's simply picking up the phone, calling them, video chatting them, or even using Facebook or some form of social media to talk to other individuals. Um, volunteering with your local community can also be a great way to stay engaged with um, that social interaction aspect. We do have the friendship line on here, which is a toll-free number you can call. They serve as a crisis hotline and they also provide support um, for other individuals as well. So if you're just looking to talk to somebody, you can call this number as well. And so, like I said, Facebook is another great way to get connected with other individuals. Um, you can simply go on Facebook, search some of your interests. Like if you enjoy watching the Atlanta Braves play baseball, you can probably find a fan page on Facebook um, where you can talk to other fans of the Braves, um, speak about trades that are going on, things of that sort. Um, we do recommend avoiding public forums because you never know what you're going to see on there. So uh, private mem or private groups where you have to be approved by the people that are in charge of running it might be a better option for you. And as always, taking advantage of the technology we have nowadays in the form of FaceTime, Google Duo, Zoom, um, anything that allows you to have that face-to-face -face connection with somebody instead of 
simply calling them on the phone, but both are great options if you are looking to connect with other individuals. Some other ways to stay engaged is to do something that you enjoy every day. So if you enjoy reading the newspaper, doing that every morning while you sip on your cup of coffee is a great way to stay engaged in doing the activities that you enjoy, making healthy lifestyle choices. So getting outside, going to the park, um, or just simply sitting on your front porch and spending some time in the sun is a great way to enjoy that. Another thing, I know a lot of times as, as men, if they used to hunt, they get older, they can't hunt like they used to, they still go to the hunt club and they still, you know, eat with the men, fellowship with the men, you know, they're out in the middle of it. So just because you might not be able to walk in the woods like you once did before, or, you know, that doesn't mean you can't go be a part of it, you know, and being as engaged as you can at that point in time, because there's always going to be, you know, something going on and something that you can, can, can be involved in. And then our next one is narrowing down your to-do list. So we all have those daunting tasks that we have to do every day, or if you have a lot of to do things to do on your to-do list, such as cleaning the house. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming if you have a lot of tasks ahead of you. So just know that it is okay to narrow down that to-do list and maybe move some of those tasks to the next day because you also wanna allow your time to rest throughout the day because rest is just as important as the socialization and active part of life. Um, and as always, keeping a good sense of humor throughout life too. You always have to be able to laugh at the little things, um, whether it's simply spilling your coffee um, or if you have an animal at home that does something silly, just being able to laugh and have a good time. And lastly, our game nights. So if you have a group of friends that enjoy playing games or family members, it's always a fun time getting together, pulling out some of the games we used to play as children, whether it's sorry, um, shoots and ladders, charades, anything like that. It's just a great way to stay engaged with others. And again, having that sense of humor back. Um, but those are just some examples as always. Tune into your interests and things that you enjoy doing and making sure that you're having a little bit of time, at least an hour of leisure time um, in the evening time. So next we'll talk about a few community resources that we have. Um, so these are located in the Richmond area. And like we mentioned before, if you do not live in the Richmond area, you can simply go onto Google um, and type in some of your interests in your area. So that way you can see what you have available. Our first one that we have here is Sportable. Now we do have a representative from Sportable on, so he can talk a little bit more about Sportable in a minute, but they are an adapted sporting agency here in the Richmond area. They provide about 13 different sports for participants to engage in. Um, and so Josh can speak a little bit more about the opportunities they have with them. And if you are finding that transportation is a big barrier for you, whether it's getting to appointments or simply going to engage in different community resources, um, we do have GRTC Care here in the Richmond area. They are an extension of the GRTC bus line, um, but they are available to provide additional assistance for those that might need it. Um, and so you can go onto the GRTC website to learn more about them and how you can become connected to that resource. And we also have sheltering arms, fitness and recreation opportunities. We have a day recreation program that you can attend if you are modified independent. And it is uh, located at um, the intersection of Boulevard and Broad Street here in Richmond. And it operates Monday through Friday from eight to 4.30. And it's an adult recreation program where they can attend to benefit from supervised and structured recreation and socialization opportunities. And they take outings and they do a lot of stuff in the building and they have access to exercise and the pool. Um, Shelter in Arms also has fitness, personal training, group exercises. Um, most of these um, are offered at our Bonaire site over off of Twin Ridge, which is back off in the Lothian Turnpike. And they have many different things available to the community and it's an accessible facility. All right, so I think we'll hand it over to Josh so he can speak a little bit about Sportable. 
Thanks, y'all. Um, I really enjoyed the the first part of your presentation, like when you were like laying down all of the like the value of like leisure activities and the importance of it. Um, and that's actually check this recording. I, I really um, could use a lot of that uh, when thinking about why affordable is important, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we offer actually we're up to 15 different sports um, at Sportable now that we offer. So, and everything is in the Richmond area, um, typically Henrico, Chesterfield, or the city of Richmond. If you don't have your own transportation, you, if, and we're in the city of Richmond, you can use the um, care on demand, the GRTC care van um, to get to our programs as well, which is really helpful um, for folks that don't have their own transportation. And also you could get to Club Rec um, using the care van as well, which is great. Um, also, the actual bus lines themselves are all like wheelchair, or not all, but majority wheelchair accessible too. Um, so for what we do, we offer competitive and recreational sports. So we try to offer a little bit of everything because we figure, um, just like we saw in this presentation, there is a variety of interests that people may have when it comes to sports and recreation. So we want to make sure that we're offering kind of a little bit of everything as best that we can. So we offer team sports. Um, our team sports include wheelchair basketball, which is typically played by people with lower limb impairments, um, wheelchair rugby, which is played by people that can operate manual wheelchairs but have impairments in all four limbs, wheelchair lacrosse, which is typically a lower limb impairment sport, um, wheelchair tennis, same thing. Um, and then we do a lot of more individualized sports. So cycling is a big program of ours. We have a bike for every single kind of ability. Um, it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you have if you are ambulatory, if you use a wheelchair, if you have limited arm and hand function, um, if you are blind, if you were a combination of some of those things, if you have had a stroke, we have a bike that you can use and by and large use independently. Um, and maybe not at first, but we can work people up. And we have the, with cycling and with all of our sports, we have the expertise through our coaches, our staff and our volunteers to help you make sure that you are seated in the right piece of equipment, using the right piece of equipment. It's gonna work best for you to maximize your independence within whatever activity that we're offering you. Um, something else that I thought Celeste did a really good job showing a lot of and Jordan, a, a really, really cost-effective um, leisure activities. The thing about a lot of adaptive sports activities is that they are not very cost-effective if you try to do them independently of an organization like Sportable. So a lot of this stuff, um, we didn't get, like, the, like I mean, paragolfers are kind of the one example that you all had mentioned, but any piece of adaptive sporting equipment, so whether it's a rugby wheelchair or a hand cycle or a recumbent tricycle or a tandem bicycle or an adapted kayak or um, a, a ramp for boccia if you can't independently throw a boccia ball or uh, just any of the stuff. You're, you're talking any single piece of equipment, you're talking minimum to $2,500 going up to in the tens of like $10,000 to $15,000 range for a single piece of equipment. So this stuff is very expensive and that can be really difficult for people to acquire. And the other thing, I don't think it's important just that it's expensive. What's important is that, or what's important to think about is that what if you spend all this money on this thing and then you don't like it? Well, it's portable, we have all of our own equipment. So we can get you into something, we can get you on something to try it, see if you like it, and then if you can't afford that for the rest of your life, you can use ours for the rest of your life as long as you come to our programs. We also have a rental program within that. So if that sport is out of season, you can use that equipment. You can keep it at your house. And then, you know, once we need it again for the actual program, we would take it back for that period of time. Um, but in addition to that, we also help people write their like grants um, to other nonprofit organizations, the Challenge Athletes Foundation and the Kelly Brush Foundation are both really great ones. They can help you get your own equipment, which is always going to be better when it comes to adaptive sports because um, none of this stuff is like a one size fits all. Everything, the more like built for exactly for you a piece of equipment is, the better time you're going to have on it. So if you're able to use kind of our equipment as your entry into something, or maybe you want to remain very recreational with it and don't want to do it, you know, extended periods of time, that's fine. Um, but if you want to get really serious and maybe get really competitive about a sport, 
the best thing to do is get your own equipment. And again, through the help of grant funding, you typically wouldn't have to pay a lot out of pocket for that either. And we can help with that too. So um, the way that our sports work, we, again, we really value the things that you all were mentioning about why you do leisure activities. And they are to keep you busy, to have friends, to um, be around people with similar like-minded interests. And it's really difficult to do that and get those values out of sports, in my opinion, if you're not doing them on a regular basis. So if you do something once a year, it's very difficult to, you know, think of that as something that you do. Because it's more like an opportunity you had instead of something that's just a part of your life. We want our sports to be more of like a part of your life. So um, I'm on our wheelchair rugby team. I practice weekly wheelchair rugby. Um, we go to tournaments in the fall, but even when we're out, out of season, we still get together once a week to pick up and scrimmage and stuff like that. Um, same with our cycling program, same with all of our programs. We, we have the opportunity for you to do it at minimum, you know, about 20 times a year. And it kind of goes up from there for all 15 of our programs. Um, so that is kind of what we do. Um, again, the, the, the baseline here is we have the equipment, we have the volunteers, we have the staff and the coaches that are experts in these sports. We can, all you need to do is be willing to show up. And something else you guys were talking about is if you do things with friends, you're more likely to continue doing it, more motivated to do it. We can help with that too, because we're actually going to hold our athletes accountable because we want them to come to our programs and get the benefits from our program. So you're going to get emails reminding you every single practice, hey, please let us know that you're going to be there, RSVP, um, particularly, especially if you're on a competitive team, you're going to actually be, your teammates are going to be relying on you to show up to tournaments, to practice, because, you know, like if you just had a bad tournament next week at practice, like, hey, we really need to work on this stuff. Like, why, why weren't you at practice? Like, we've got to get better. Those kinds of, all those kinds of things, the same, if you've ever played sports in your life, um, they're just, they're just like that. Um, so that is really what we get out of it. And again, we're extremely recreational or extremely competitive. It's whatever. Sportable is all about helping people reach their goals, not putting our goals on other people. Um, so yeah, that is basically it, I think. Great. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, Josh. Also, sorry, Celeste, I didn't recognize you with your glasses and no mask earlier. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Josh. All right, so we have wrapped up. Um, if you have any questions, now is your time to share. Um, otherwise, if you think of questions later on, we have put our emails down here, so please feel free to send us an email. Um, so if you have any questions about what we discussed today or questions on how to get connected to different community resources, we are happy to help out in any way we can. So please feel free to send us an email and we will get back to you as soon as possible.